Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non-governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives and advocates from around the world to meet, network and forge new scientific collaborations. Okay, thank you so much for the invitation to present here some data about our research uh, about advanced glycation end products. And in this contribution, I would like to address AGEs in relation to vascular aging. So what are we talking about? It was already introduced uh, in the morning session. Actually, we are talking about a very a simple reaction between uh, reduced uh, sugars, as you can see here, with proteins, and in time it will form shift based amidori products, as you can see here, an attachment of uh, the carbonyls to proteins, and uh, later on, uh, in periods of months, years, the formation of advanced glycation end products, modifications of amino acids, lysine residues, arginine residues, and also, of course, crosslinks in this case, pentosidine between lysine arginine residues within proteins, but also between proteins. So this is actually uh, where we are talking about. We have techniques uh, to measure these advanced glycation end products, uh, analytical techniques. Uh, we have UPLC and SMS to measure uh, some of these advanced glycation end products. HPLC with fluorescent detection, for instance, for measuring pentosidine. We have ELISA techniques, specific antibodies, and we have the so-called H-reader, which is more or less a device uh, measuring skin out of fluorescence as an estimate of HEs in the skin. And what you can see here, indeed, is that diabetes is associated with increased levels of advanced glycation end products here in the vascular wall. So we have also measured uh, in plasma uh, the levels of advanced glycation end products here in type 1 diabetes and as you can appreciate here indeed increased levels of advanced glycation end products in diabetes. But what important is, is also the increase of AGEs during aging, also in non-diabetic individuals. And actually that is much more uh, clear actually in the collagen fraction here in cartilage. So we have measured advanced glycation end products in the cartilage fraction. And what you can see here is an increase of browning, an indication of increased aging in the cartilage fraction, as well as age fluorescence. But with more analytical techniques, we also found more CML carboxyethylysine and also pentosidine increase by aging with here a kind of a lag phase. So indeed, uh, ages are increased during aging. And in the cartilage, we have studied it in more detail, and what you can see here is indeed that the increase of AGEs are accompanied by actually less digestibility of the collagen fraction. Um, and that is actually demonstrated here in this panel. So what's happening actually here is also happening in the vascular wall and also, for instance, in the skin. But here data uh, and a presentation of that what's happening in the vascular wall, more or less the same process as in the cartilage fraction, cross-linking, cross-linking of the vascular wall, which will lead to arterial stiffness, hypertension, and in time, uh, heart failure, and that will 
finally end up in cardiovascular disease. So we have some uh, data about that. Uh, we have uh, measured in a uh, very large cohort with the so-called age reader, the skin out of fluorescence. We have measured pentosidine, the crosslink in the plasma fraction, and we have actually studied the association of AGEs with arterial stiffness. And we have measured in this cohort arterial stiffness with the sphygma core and as pulse wave velocity, actually the golden standard for arterial stiffness, actually a measure of vascular aging. And what we indeed found was a strong association between AGEs and vascular stiffness or vascular aging. And indeed, uh, in two other studies here, uh, a summary, we found that AGEs as measured in the plasma, several AGEs in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are actually associated independently with the incidence of fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular disease. So in both type 1 and in type 2 diabetes, as studied in long follow-up studies in collaboration with the Stino Diabetes Center in Copenhagen and with people from the epic and study in Utrecht. But important, I think, to mention is that we can discriminate the formation of advanced glycation end products in a very slow process, as, as explained. Uh, it's described actually for the first time by uh, Maillard, a very slow process, so in years it will end up with advanced glycation end products. But we now know that there is a very fast reaction actually in the formation of more or less the same end products, and that is via decarbonyl compounds. And I would like to focus actually in this presentation on methyl glyoxal as a very important uh, precursor in the formation of advanced glycation end products. And methyl glyoxal is formed within cells by uh, the glycolysis, by especially the dephosphorylation of dehydroxyacetone phosphate and glycyaldehyde 3-phosphate produced in glycolysis, dephosphorylation and an increase of methyl glyoxal and methyl glyoxal is one of the most important precursors in the formation of advanced glycation end products. Also very important to mention that we have an enzyme in our body which is actually able to protect uh, the body against the carbonyl stress, against methyl glyoxal. Glyoxylase 1 is able to degradate methyl glyoxal to delactate. So here actually the structure of methyl glyoxal and because of the decarbonyl compound it's very, very reactive. It's formed uh, very fast uh, in the body. Uh, here an example, uh, we have measured uh, during an OGTT in type 2 diabetes methyl glyoxal and what you can see here is actually a very fast increase of methyl glyoxal during an OGTT in type 2 diabetes. So within 30 minutes you can actually form important precursors of advanced glycation end products, methyl glyoxal. And more or less under the same conditions you find increased levels of methyl glyoxal derived ages within four hours. So it's a very very fast reaction. We are able to measure methyl glyoxal by uh, UPLC and SMS and with this technique we are able to measure such kind of effects. Now we have actually finished that study in uh, 600 uh, type 2 diabetic patients and indeed we found, we confirmed this preliminary data in a very large cohort. So this is a very important uh, step in the formation of advanced glycation end products. A very fast uh, process and we have studied the relevance in much more detail in animal models where we overexpressed glyoxylase 1 
we overexpressed cryoxylase 1, in this case in rats. And what we observed was in diabetes increased levels of decarbonyls, methane cryoxyl, cryoxyl, increased levels of AGEs, and these levels were decreased, strongly decreased by cryoxylase 1 overexpression, indicating this uh, important uh, enzyme in the degradation of uh, ages and also uh, is an indication of the importance of methane cryoxyl in the formation of AGEs. And it might be that methane cryoxyl explains at least for 50% the formation of uh, AGEs. And we have here measured AGEs. Uh, carboxymethan, lysine, CL, MGH1, THP, archpyrimidine, and we've combined it in the so-called Z-score of AGEs. So what is the relevance of the formation of AGEs via this pathway? Um, we have studied that also in this uh, animal model, but not only in plasma, we found that AGEs were increased in diabetes also here again in the vascular wall, and also in the vascular wall, the HEs were completely reduced actually by cryoxylase 1 overexpression. And here the quantification of that. So, what are the consequences of that? Uh, we have uh, studied uh, that um, ex vivo, uh, so we isolated uh, small arteries and we've measured the activity. Uh, of the uh, arteries with uh, the myograph and what you can see here is an impaired vasoreactivity of the arteries uh, as induced by acetylcholine, impaired vasoreactivity, here the controls and an improvement actually of the functionality of the arteries by cryoxylase 1 overexpression. And also uh, two other markers uh, indicating uh, vascular dysfunction, the expression of VCAM, ICAM increased by diabetes and improved actually attenuated, strongly attenuated by cryoxylase 1 overexpression, indicating that this pathway is actually also very important in relation to vascular function, in this case in diabetes. So we have studied in more detail uh, the consequences of uh, this uh, mechanism in relation to complications. I have uh, only uh, two slides about that. Here, uh, diabetic nephropathy. Uh, in case of diabetes, a loss of podocytes, one of the early markers of uh, uh, early uh, nephropathy, a loss of uh, podocytes and a normalization by cryoxylase 1 overexpression. And also biomarkers measured in the urine fraction, albumin, lipocalin, etc., etc., increased by diabetes and actually decreased by cryoxylase 1 overexpression. Here, data uh, obtained in collaboration with Ellen Stitt uh, in relation to diabetic retinopathy, and the same actually as for nephropathy, increased markers of. Uh, early retinopathy in our animal model by diabetes, increased expression of GFAP, TIMP1, CDGGF, and an improvement by cryoxylase 1 overexpression. So this is uh, all in relation to microvascular complications. What about uh, large vessel disease? What about atherosclerosis? Uh, we have studied that in much more detail. Here's some data about that. We have also measured with mass spec in homogenates of atherosclerotic lesions the levels of advanced glycation end products. And what we found was that, especially in the rupture prone plaques, so the most, most dangerous plaques, uh, the ages are increased in comparison to uh, stable plaques. We have confirmed that with. Uh, immunistic chemistry, and we have now strong indications that HEs are actually involved in the rupture of plaques. What's the reason of that? What's the reason of increased levels of HEs in this case in uh, unstable plaques, in the most dangerous plaques? And we think that the down regulation, 
uh, of cryoxalase 1 is of importance. We've measured uh, with proteomics and trans transcriptomics cryoxalase 1 expression in rupture plaque segments. We've compared it with the more healthy segments and we found actually a downregulation of the enzyme which protects our body against carbonyl stress, cryoxalase 1. And uh, I think this is a very important result. We've studied that in much more detail uh, in vitro and also uh, in small animals. And here uh, a set of data as obtained from in vitro experiments where we incubated uh, uh, monocytes, macrophages with TNF, with hypoxia, also with hyperglycemia. And what we found actually was that under such kind of conditions, Cryoxalase 1 is actually decreased. Not only the expression, but also the activity is decreased. And that's very important. Uh, and the decrease of cryoxalase 1 under such kind of conditions. And actually, in the plex, we found that HEs are associated with inflammation and with hypoxia. But under such kind of conditions of inflammation, of hypoxia, we found decreased levels of cryoxalase 1 and increased levels of methylcryoxal and increased levels of advanced glycation end products. And that's, in my view, very important. And that links this pathway, methylcryoxal, cryoxalase 1, to several age-related diseases. So not only diabetes, but also obesity, cancer, epigenetics, uh, disorders of the central nervous system, hypertension, are all associated with increased levels of methylcryoxal and HEs. And the reason for that is, in my view, the down regulations, the down regulation in a such kind of conditions of uh, cryoxalase 1. But what about aging? Um, some data about that. Um, this pathway in relation to aging. Uh, we know from uh, animal work that also cryoxalase 1 activity is decreased during aging. Here uh, data in red. Um, and we found also in red increased levels of markers of senescence in the kidney. And this increase, as you can see here, this increase was actually strongly attenuated by cryoxalase 1 overexpression, indicating that this pathway is of relevance in uh, senescence. Here, and it was stained with uh, calactosidase, and we have also uh, data about other markers of senescence, and uh, more or less the same data emerged. Increased levels of markers of senescence uh, during elderly, and actually a reduction of these markers by the overexpression of cryoxalase 1. We know that, of course, the question then is, and what is the mechanism behind the effect of methylcryoxal cryoxalase 1 in relation to aging? And it might be uh, oxidative stress. Oxidative stress, uh, DNA, uh, DNA damage, and uh, finally uh, aging. And Back to our uh, animal mo model uh, of cryoxalase 1 overexpression. Um, this uh, is what I already demonstrated uh, cryoxalase 1 overexpression, increased levels of carbonyl stress, HEs, reduction by cryoxalase 1 overexpression. But we also measured oxidative stress in our animal model. And what you can see here is uh, indeed by diabetes increased levels of oxidative stress as measured by uh, several markers in the urine fraction and a 50% reduction of oxidative stress by cryoxalase 1 overexpression, indicating that there is a pathway of methylcryoxal cryoxalase 1 leading to oxidative stress and maybe uh, aging. Here, another set of data actually confirming uh, this idea. Uh, experiments uh, performed in the C. elegans. 
And what you can see here in the C. elegans, uh, incubated with uh, high glucose concentrations, increased levels of MGH1, that is the major methylglyoxal derived H, increased levels of MGH1, and uh, by an overexpression of glyoxalase 1, a decrease of the specific MGO uh, modified H. But more important, we also found increased levels of oxidative stress in uh, the Z elegans by glucose and a strong reduction by glyoxalase 1 overexpression, actually in completely agreement with the experiments in the red. And this is uh, very uh, uh, intriguing, I think. Uh, they have studied uh, in Heidelberg, uh, Marcus and co-workers, also the lifespan of the C. elegans under these conditions. Here the normal conditions and here the C. elegans with an overexpression of glyoxalase 1. So there is actually an enhancement of the lifespan of the C. elegans by an overexpression of uh, glyoxalase 1. And on the other hand, we have a reduction, a knockout of glyoxalase 1. There was a reduction of the lifespan from 15 to 8 days, directly indicating this pathway uh, in relation to aging. So what is actually the, 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 uh, the, the consequences or the, the impact for the human situation? Um, we have some data about that. Uh, here uh, some experiments uh, we have done in collaboration with Jan Wiemakers. We have studied actually the, the fibroblasts of patients with a prokarya related uh, syndrome, uh, all due to an impairment of DNA repair. So we have studied the, uh, fi the fibroblasts of uh, these patients. We've done uh, proteomics. And what we found actually uh, was a difference of, uh, let's say, 68 proteins, differences between the wild type and the fibroblast uh, derived from these patients. But the major protein we found actually affected by, uh, of in the uh, cells was glyoxalase 1. We found in the fibroblast of uh, patients with uh, prokarya actually a down regulation of glyoxalase 1. And that was uh, actually accompanied, although not significant, by increased levels of advanced glycation end products in these fibroblasts. And these fibroblasts are also much more sensitive against a stimulus with methylglyoxal. So, there seems to be a link also with the human situation. And we have also data that methylglyoxal, as measured in the plasma, is uh, strongly predictive for poor outcome uh, in a follow-up study of uh, 15 years. Here data from uh, a group uh, from uh, Japan, and they have demonstrated actually that methylglyoxal is a predictor in type 2 diabetes of IMT, pulse wave velocity, and blood pressure. All estimates of, let's say, vascular aging. And they have compared uh, methylglyoxal with other intermediates, 3-deoxyglucosone, HbA1c, also uh, TG, and only methylglyoxal was strongly associated with these markers of vascular aging. Actually, underlining the importance for this pathway, of this pathway in uh, aging, also in, in human. So, in summary, we can say that indeed ages are increased during aging, predominantly formed by methylglyoxal. Uh, glyoxalase 1 is decreased by aging, by inflammation, and also by hypoxia. Uh, and this is accompanied by increased levels of methylglyoxal and methylglyoxal derived advanced glycation end products. The glyoxalase 1 overexpression in AIDS rats and also in the C. elegans showed uh, amelioration of uh, senescence, and methylglyoxal in human 
is associated with markers of vascular aging. So what causes us to age? Yes, I think uh, AGEs, advanced glycation end products, uh, might be of importance in relation to aging. And here actually the acknowledgements, uh, here people from Maastricht, and this work was actually done in collaboration with people from uh, UK, uh, uh, United States, Michael Brownlee, uh, Toshi Miata, and Alan Stitt from Belfast, uh, Utrecht uh, Pastekamp, and Peter Rossing from the Stino uh, Diabetes Center, and Jan Wiemakers from Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Thank you so much. Hi, thanks. Um, how did you actually um, arrange the overexpression of the glyoxalase one, and were there any negative impacts associated with it, to do as well as the positive ones? No, there were no negative uh, impacts. It was actually with an actin promoter, um, and, and that was our uh, construct. Actually, the animals were uh, made by Toshimiyata from uh, Japan, but there was no negative impact. I enjoyed your talk. Uh, I have a question. Did you check if, uh, uh, say, nutrition or uh, exercise can uh, reverse the uh, inactivity of uh, glyoxylase 1? And another question. Uh, uh, do you have any data regarding the epigenetics of this gene during aging? Uh, concerning your first uh, point, of course we are now busy with all kinds of intervention studies to see whether we can reduce the carbonyl stress. Uh, metformin, for instance, is, is a molecule with a strong homology uh, with uh, aminoguanidine. And metformin is able to quench methylglyoxal. Um, also exercise uh, is associated with a reduction of carbonyl stress. Uh, weight reduction by bariatric surgery is associated with a reduction of carbonyl stress. Uh, pyridoxamine B6 is, uh, and other polyphenols as well are actually associated with a reduction of carbonyl stress. These compounds are able to quench methylcleoxal. And your second question was about epigenetics. Uh, now there are no data about the epigenetics of this gene. There are data about the role of MGO in the modification of, uh, yes, of DNA. Of, uh, and, and so I think methylcleoxal can be of importance in relation to epigenetics and the so-called glucose and memory because of modification of DNA. Yeah, 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 okay, that, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but independent of that, this, uh, there seems to be also a role of uh, MGO in epigenetics. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, so um, thank you very much for your interesting talk.